Hi, welcome to the Market Peak. This is Benjamin Day with Pikes Peak Urban Living and Selly Group Real Estate. We're reviewing the numbers for the first two quarters of 2013 and real estate activity in the Pikes Peak region. We're going to start with the Case-Shiller Index. The Case-Shiller Index nationally. This is a national representation of 20 cities. 10 cities on one composite, 20 on another, and you can see that the 10 and 20 cities, as you go to the right side of the graph, have been moving in lockstep with each other since about 2006 with very similar patterns uh, in the 10 city composite and the 20 city composite. The Case-Shiller is an index that is a representation of 20 selected markets as selected by Standard & Poor's and McGraw-Hill and they measure year over year sales for the same property and what they're seeing right now is that nationwide the sales from one year ago the average sales price is 12.1 percent higher than it was at the end of April 2012 this is a trailing data trailing by about two months from where we are on a national standard so what's happening in the Colorado Springs area well, it's good, but it's not quite as good. We're up 6.9% year over year on our home price appreciation. And that's the best gain that we've seen in price since 2007. 2007, uh, we ended up losing all of those gains in the second six months of the year. Our appreciation, though, is only 60% of the 20 city composite. How are we seeing in sales go along? Well, last month we had 1,104 single family units. That's down 10 units from the previous month, but it was back-to-back -back months of over 1,100 sales. That was the best June that we've experienced since 2007. Uh, the first time that we've had, uh, that's the best six months that we've had in the marketplace since the year of 2006. We're ahead of year 2007 sales, and we'll probably blow away year 2007 sales because we don't anticipate a slowdown in the second six months. We could see there was a lag coming for the second six months in 2007. And that's when the market really started to fall apart was that second half of, o, of I'm sorry, of 07 was when the market really started to fall apart. Uh, Year-to-date single family sales are at 5,336. We are 15% off the best pace we've ever experienced in 2005. Inventory is tight. This is a relationship between sales and active listings. And right now, there's about 105 days worth of market time. If you, that's how long it's going to take for every listing on the market, all 3,800 of them, single-family homes, to sell through. We have three and a half months of inventory. Only two times at the turning point, the mid-year, have we had less inventory for sale. In 2004, we had 3.3 months. And in 2005, we had 3.1 months. Uh, in 2006, it was four and a half months. And we were over six months of supply in 2007. The average sales price is 240634 That's a healthy average sales price. Historically, we've back somewhere around year 2004, year 2005 values. The market crested and peaked out in 2006 and 2007, where it went considerably higher. But what's interesting is that the average sales price for the month of June was only 4% better than the month of June for 2012. Uh, this is still a market that has received a lot of benefit from low interest rates, and we'll talk about more of that in just a second. The pendings and under contracts remain healthy at over 2,000 units. They're down a bit from where they were last month, uh, but they're still 30% higher than what we've seen over the previous four-year average. The median sales price, again, confirms how interest rate dependent the marketplace has been lately. For the first six months of the year, we've jacked the average median sales price all the way up to $225,000. And one time in the history of the Colorado Springs Pikes Peak Association market have we seen a $225,000 median sales price, and that was in the fall of 2006. We've never seen it higher than two twenty-five. dollars So we're on the button as high as we've ever seen the median sales price. For the year, we have had a lot more inventory. You've, we've seen a lot of articles, you know, the usual six to 12 month lag where the media figures out what's happening in real estate, talking about suppressed inventory. Well, inventory has been higher this year than it was last year. We've had 15.6% listings, 15.6% um, higher number of listings come on the market than we had one year ago. And the active single family market right now is 4.5% higher than it was at the same time last year. The probability of sale shows the overall health of the marketplace. And if you take the gross number of listings that have come for, to the market and you divide that into the gross number of listings that have sold, we come up with a number of 59.6%.
And that means that it's a very likely market that if you put your house on the market at the right price and in decent condition, it's going to sell. That's 5% higher than what the number was at this time last year. Last year ended up being the second most probable year that a home would sell on the market ever in the Colorado Springs MLS. And right now we are 5% higher than that. Here's our red stop sign. Interest rates have juiced. They're up to 4.3% right now on the 30-year fixed interest rate. They were actually higher than that just two weeks ago. Uh, but they are now 0.8% higher than they were for the month of May average. Here's an example as to what's going on with those interest rates. Uh, we had a bottom on May 2nd of 3.35%. I had a 30-year fixed VA jumbo close at three and a quarter just a couple weeks ago, and that was locked in on that week of May 2nd. It was an insane interest rate. And you can see where rates were right there on the week of June 27th. They came back up to 4.46%. Rates have risen in the last 48 hours because of the muddled minutes that have come out of the Fed meeting, and the stock market is rallying, and there's a lot of health and job creation that seems to be happening nationwide. And even though the Fed is continuing their quantitative easing policy, and they're keeping interest rates at a 0%, we're starting to see the rates go up because they can. Uh, our personal assumption is that they're probably going to dribble back down as the summer months continue. But here's where you can see the actual pain of what's happened over those interest rate gains. On a $200,000 mortgage, for over a 56-day period, the buyer lost $127 worth of money leverage. 14.4% of their money just went down the toilet because of a 3.35% interest rate turning into a 4.46% interest rate. That's painful, and that will keep buyers out of the market. What's kind of funny is what we've seen happen in the marketplace to the pendings while the pendings were very, very strong in May, and they continue to look strong in the month of June, where you can see the associated interest rate with each of the previous years, uh, what seemed to happen right as the rates started to spike in early June was it was pushing people off the fence. Instead of getting that three and a half to three and three quarter interest rate, they said, oh no, I better act now and get four and a quarter, four and a half while I can. It's after that run that we've started to see the drag towards the 4th of July in the marketplace. Showing activity's been down a bit, Sales seem to have dribbled off a little bit as the uncertainty of the interest rate climate has changed a little bit. Here's a relationship of the last six and a half years showing supply and demand rates. And you can see that where we are on sales, the blue lines, is equivalent to where we were in the year 2007. But the squiggly red caterpillar looking line is down substantially, half of where it was uh, in 2007, because there's half as many listings that are out there. And that's the market squeeze that we're experiencing. So you can imagine the frenetic activity happening to the market when interest rates at long last started to spike and people are out there looking, dang, there's still not a lot for us to choose from, especially because there's so many more buyers in the marketplace with that I'm actively competing with. And here you can also see just over the last two and a half years what's gone on uh, with the market of tight supply for 16 consecutive months. We've been at 4.8 months of inventory or less, and that is what is propelling values up. It's still surprising that, rate, that prices are only up 6.9% because we have uh, relatively a healthy marketplace with so few foreclosures in it anymore and suppressed inventory and strong demand uh, higher than what we're seeing on other national averages. It's not just a, it's a supply side uh, price gain that we're having in other big marketplaces and other locales like Phoenix, etc. But it's the strength of the purchasing side of things that's really strong here that's unique to our marketplace. And yet, the sales price gains just haven't really reflected it like it's been reflected in other marketplaces. Here's a comparison of the months of inventory for the month of June and what it's looked like over the last 12 years. And this will give you the benchmark for how strong our market is, especially if you look to the left side of the graph. And you can look at 2004 and 2005 being the only years that we're outpacing our tiny little months of inventory right now. Now, price trends, what you can see is that there's a pretty good spike happening in both the median and average sales price, but it's not quite as strong as you can see in the new listing price. The new listing price is the green graph, and it's better seen here over the last 18 months of real estate data, that sellers have been greedier than the buyers have been willing to commit to. Sellers have been putting their properties on the market at higher and higher prices, and buyers have been willing to come up some of the way but not all of the way. It would be interesting if the median and the average sold prices were actually outpacing the new listing price, and that would tell you that buyers were really strongly committed 
to serious gains in pricing. But the average listing price and the average asking price seem to be still uh, relatively higher and coming on at a higher percentage and higher gains than where buyers are committing to. In the building industry, the permit activity is strong. It's up 30% compared to 2012. But what's really staggering here is if you look at what's going on on the big bar graph, and that's the single family permit value. And what we're seeing right now in the number of permits on the right side, you can see where the average permit value was in 2006 and where it is today. Last month in June, the average single family permit was $413,000. That's 250% larger than it was in 2006. So the builders certainly aren't putting up the number of houses that they were in 05 and 06, but we've already outpaced all of 2011, 2009, 2008 in total number of permits. We'll blow past 2012 here probably in October, and we'll definitely get past 2007 in the number of permits that are pulled, making it the strongest year for builders in terms of gross permits since 2006. But what's the untold story here is that if we end up around 3,000 permits and they're averaging 350 to $360,000, the gross permit valuation would actually be substantially higher than it was in 2006. Part of that has to do with the Waldo fire, and more of that's going to have to do with the Black Forest fire as $350,000 to $600,000 houses are replaced. That definitely increases the value of the permits. But that's also the marketplace that people who are willingly making choices to purchase homes are buying more frequently at. And there just isn't much cheap dirt to put up two hundred dollars to $250,000 houses anywhere in the county. Here's a reflection of what the market activity is in all the different MLS areas. You take a look at the aforementioned Black Forest, and there was some heavy inventory sitting out there at 10 and a half months of time to sell when the fire event occurred. A couple other areas that we saw some interesting numbers on last month. The little arrows on the left column are all associating to areas that had substantial increases in single family listings. Most of the other areas were flat to just up 5, 10 units over the month, but we were seeing 30 to 40 units more coming on in Northeast, Southwest, and Woodland Park with 10 plus percent gains in their active inventory. So a quick refresher on some of the key numbers that we're seeing in the local marketplace and what we're seeing here in the active, pending, and sold marketplace compared to the previous years. The pendings are higher, the solds are substantially higher, and the active listings are only moderately larger than they were just last year and way down from where they were in 2011. So a quick comparison here going over each of the major areas that we as a company tend to work and do a lot of business in. And the big question mark is why Southwest price just isn't that isn't higher. And there were two two million dollar sales in 80906 last month, just in the month of June. And yet the average sales price is down lower. A lot of that stuff that's usually selling in the five to eight hundred thousand dollar category just isn't moving this year, even though the number of units that is sold in Southwest has been 50 units higher and the months of inventory is lower. What that tells us is that District 2 is selling well. District 2 is less expensive real estate in the Southwest MLS area. District 12, Cheyenne Mountain, just isn't moving as much, and there are fewer units for sale over there. In East Colorado Springs, we're also seeing a bit of a head-scratcher on why the price is down, even though months of inventory is down, although there wasn't much way it could go down from where it was last year. It's still down about 10 days' worth at only 2.1 months of inventory, and units sold this year are 40 units higher, 25% higher than just last year. Monument is also down slightly in price, even though the months of inventory is approximately half of what it was last year. And the number of units over the first six months of the year are almost is right at 58 units higher compared to 116 that sold last year. So that's a 33% gain in listings that have sold. Uh, Northwest is pretty interesting. Northwest experienced the fire last year, and it experienced it with low inventory. And we can actually see the months of inventory is growing now in Northwest at close to six months. But more units have sold in Northwest than last year, this being 12 months removed from the fire. And the average sales price is up 3% at a $10,000 gain. Northgate is down slightly in price, but these numbers are a bit skewed because Northgate is seeing a lot of gains in sales that are not actively recorded in the MLS because they're new built construction sales. And a lot more of those will be delivering in the second half of 2013. Uh, the months of inventory you can see are quite low at 3.1 months. The downtown, central MLS, reduced inventory, big increase in sales, nice little bounce in price. 
Uh, powers, $10,000 increase in price compared to one year ago. Significant increase in the units that were sold. And there's even less months of inventory out there. Briargate is where the market is really humming along. Gain in price out in Briargate of $24,000, almost $25,000 compared to last year. Significant gains in the number of units sold and next to no inventory at less than two and a half months worth of inventory. And Northeast has a good gain as well with about a 6% gain in price, significant gains on the months sold, and again a decrease in the months of inventory. When you're looking at sales over $400,000 and what they represent in the marketplace, this is a growing segment of the marketplace where it's now up to 10% of the market. And there's a significant gain if you're looking there at the number of sales. That's a 33% increase. 544 units closed the first six months of this year compared to 367 last year. But if you're looking at the numbers over 600,000, this is still a significant market of opportunity. If you're one of those people who's got a house between 300 and 450 and you've had wage growth and you're still wanting to use some of the four to four and a half percent interest rates that are out there and move up your asset, well, this is still very much a buyer's market in these higher ranges where you can see there's decent inventory and anywhere between 10 months and three years worth of inventory on the marketplace, up to $800,000. Uh, the numbers that have closed are smaller over here. We do have a decent number of contracts for the middle of the year, but they're still pretty good inventory. If you're wondering where the houses can lop twenty dollars to $50,000 off the sales price, this is where it's at. Here's a breakdown in the marketplace as to where the pricing occurs. And what you can see is that less than 10% of the market now is under $100,000. And a huge chunk is between $100,000 and $200,000 at 38% of the market and another 30% of the market is between 2 and 300% of the market. But we now have 13% of the market that's between 3 and 400,000. And that's really kind of the bread and butter of the marketplace right now where if you've got a really good condition property in an appealing area, that's where there's going to be some very serious interest. So, last question we have for our market analysis here We're talking about the 2013 June market what effect did the Black Forest Fire have on the market? So this is a quick snapshot again. It showed the slide earlier on the Northwest market. And what happened last year and what happened this year? And you see the first series of rows there. And you can see that there was good sales activity for the first six months. And yes, it slowed down in July and August because the fire affected sales. But what happened was that there was only 4.1 months of inventory when the fire occurred. And the average sales price was decent at three, two, three and a quarter. And here we are one year removed and the sales units are actually higher. Now there's more months of inventory that are sitting out there and we're seeing some very speculative pricing. That doesn't make any sense as a phrase. Very speculative would be better translated for the layman as speculative pricing by sellers who are trying to match new construction prices with older homes. And that's probably not going to happen, but somewhere in between might. So inventory has lengthened now to 5.7 months of inventory, but the average sales price is up 10 grand over where it was one year ago. Well, Black Forest, here's what we compare the pre-Waldo market, Northwest June 2012, to the post-Black Forest market, June 2013. What you can see is that sales rates were higher in Northwest in the first six months of 2012 compared to where they were in Black Forest in 2013. And the really big number difference is the months of inventory. Black Forest was able to more quickly recover from the fire and has seen very little effects to its pricing. A lot of people were projecting a 5 to 10% drop in price that just hasn't occurred and it's now up 3% as an MLS area. And the reason that that price went up was because there was so little inventory when the fire happened. Different story in Black Forest, 10 and a half months worth of inventory and then a fire event. Uh, I don't have the specific numbers right now on how many houses that were actively listed or under contract in escrow were actually destroyed by the fire. I don't know what that number was. And Black Forest is a very unique area. Uh, I don't want to make Mountain Shadows out to be an area that's not unique. It certainly is. But it has convenience of location central to the city. It has uh, immediate access to a lot of the city within 10 to 15 minutes and it has views. So losing vegetation and losing trees is inconvenient, but it's a reduction of 20 to 30 percent of the reason why you would live there. In Black Forest, there are places that have views, uh, but a lot of the real appeal of being in Black Forest is the trees. And the assessor's office indicated that about 60 to 65 percent of the lots in mostly private Black Forest were affected and burned in some capacity 
by the fire event that occurred out there. And a lot of the lack of restrictions and covenants and the two and a half acres and the five acres and living off a well and being able to have a detached garage and a pottery studio or whatever you might want to have in Black Forest, those are unique attributes to that area that are extremely hard to replace in the El Paso County marketplace. So it's quite a bit of mystery as to what the fire event will mean to the Black Forest market. But these are the numbers as they stood, just as an effective comparison to the pre-Waldo fire event and where things were effectively the pre-Black Forest event and what was going on in both markets before those happened. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Please give us a call if we can help.